Hi, this is Jason Nash, and the following lesson is part of my vSphere Advanced Networking course. We end up with the base distributed switch. And what we have here is the main switch and then the uplinks group. And I'll talk about these separately. An uplinks group is an important thing to understand. So first of all, let's look at the main switch. So this is the main switch. It's got all your information here. It's got your summary tab. It's got your number of hosts, your number of VMs, your number of networks, your number of total ports, available ports, blah, blah, blah. As you start rolling hosts and VMs over, these numbers will go up. Networks, we don't really have any. We will have more later as we add port groups. Ports, this is going to give you a list of all the ports and the ID numbers. So when you start adding VMs into this, you know it probably makes more sense if I show you this in a working switch. So here we can see I've got my three hosts rolled in. I've got 18 VMs, my networks. So here are all my networks, which equate to port groups. These are all my port groups. We'll talk about what port binding means here in just a bit, what we're tagging VLAN numbers, what were number of VMs connected, number of ports used, if alarms are enabled. Ports tab, this is kind of important. It'll be more important later when we talk about port mirroring and NetFlow. But when you plug a VM into a vSwitch or a VM's NIC into a vSwitch, as a VM may have multiple NICs, it gets assigned a port, a port ID on the distributed switch. So Media XP here was assigned port number 11. His buddy, Media SAB, was 10. Domain Control was 1. View Connection Server, 0. And it's just kind of randomness. So down here's another group of them. I'm sure there's an algorithm. I don't know what it is. But it goes all the way down to 651 for right now. So if you never need to do a manual lookup, if you're doing any troubleshooting, or again, we'll talk about this with port mirroring and NetFlow because it references these port IDs, and you want to know what is port 11 because it's sending a whole lot of traffic, come in here, look at port 11. You can look at the VM, the MAC, the direct, if you're using VM direct path for pass through, and if the link's up and which VLAN and all that. So it's all there. Resource allocation, this is where you configure network I.O. control. We'll talk about this again in the traffic shaping lesson. Configuration, this is a GUI showing my current configuration. You will also see this for each host in the network section that we'll look at here in a little bit. But it shows my port groups are on the left and anything like VMs that I've got plugged into them. On the right are my physical uplinks, which VM NIC is plugged in and which servers they are. So you can see here that like Optimus is, has two NICs plugged in, but everybody else has four. That's just me messing around. If you look over here, I may have, and this gets a little head, but for management, I may have some of these physical uplinks as active, standby, or unused. So if I click on it, it shows which ones are being used. I'm basically bouncing across all four NICs right now, so there's nothing too exciting here. But if you only use NICs, you know, uplink one and uplink two for VM traffic, those would light up. It's just a quick way to, to see what is used by what. If we click the I information here, you will pull up either, say, CDP for Cisco or LLDP for non-Cisco. And this is very similar to what the vSwitch already does, but you can just pull in and see what it's connected to. Information here is just basic information about the port group. Virtual machines, just all the VMs that are using your distributed switch. Hosts, all the hosts that are using your distributed switch. And then you've got tasks and events, alarms, anything like that. And permissions, because you can set permissions on the switch. Now, jumping back over, let's take a look at what our settings are. So summary tab, we can do edit settings, or again, I'm right click heavy, edit settings. So here's some of the main options. This is on the main switch. They are switch wide. So first of all, number of uplink ports. Remember how I told you you could set this later? There you go. That's where you change it. You change it, you hit OK. It's non-disruptive. Everybody goes about their business. Edit uplink names. I'll talk about this a little bit more in the lesson, but you can change the names of your uplinks, and I'll go over why in a little bit. But if you've got 10, it'll give you 10 boxes. If I've got four, it gives me four boxes, and I can change those names. Advanced, set the maximum MTU. I'll talk about this in the jumbo frame section on traffic shaping. But basically, if you want to do jumbo frames, 9,000 byte frames, you first need to set it right here on the main switch. So we can go 9,000. Discovery protocol is enabled. I have set it for Cisco Discovery CDP. We have the option for that or LLDP. And if you want it to listen or you want it to advertise or both, I like it to do both. That way when I go look at my physical switch, I can see you know information both ways. 
And then if you want to fill out information about the name and other details that might show up on CDP or something like that, you enter that there. Network adapters, let's show this to you on the working switch. So we'll do that. Right click, edit settings, network adapters. Very simply, I can select a host on the left. It shows me which NICs are on the right and how they match up to the uplink numbers. Private VLAN, I don't have anything here. We talk about this in the VLAN sections. It basically kind of lets you do layer two segmentation or VLANs within VLANs. This is configured here and we do a lab of that. NetFlow, we cover this in the uh, troubleshooting section, but basically I just can have it send IP statistics to what's known as a NetFlow collector. And I'll show you that really cool GUI, gives you charts and graphs and all sorts of stuff. And port mirroring, which is basically allows you to do traffic sniffing. And again, we do a lab of that later. So I hit OK and we're back. So those are your main switch settings. Then you have what are called uplinks. And really, for the distributed switch, you only have one set of uplinks. This is in contrast to, say, the Cisco Nexus 1000V which does allow me to have multiple uplink groups. So I may have one uplink group connected to a DMZ network and a second one connected to the production network. And one uplink group care, you know, the DMZ one cares about all the VLANs in the DMZ. The ones for production care about those VLANs. We can't do that with the vSphere distributed switch. If you have a DMZ network and a separate physical production network, we'll talk about how to segment that. But you only have one uplink group in each VDS. So let's click Manage. So we do the name, we do description, number of ports, standard port binding is static. We can override that and I'll show you where. Uh, then we have a whole bunch of policies here. So a couple of things. You're going to see a lot of this here is uncheckable. That's because these are mainly going to be set at the port group level. So if we look, what can we set? Like three whole things. By the way, this list here directly lines up to this list here. So if you want to go one by one, you can do this. If you want to scroll through all of them, you can do this. Starting at the top, security. We talk about this and talked about this in the security lesson. Again, set by port group. Ingress, egress traffic shaping. We talk about this in the traffic shaping lesson. You can't set it here anyway. And then VLAN trunking. So by default, he's going to expect you to trunk VLANs. Now we can override this again in port groups and things like that, but you know by default it's going to expect VLAN trunking. All you're telling it here is what's the range I should expect to see. By default, 0 through 4094 is everything. Tagged, untagged, all the tagged VLANs, everything. If you follow your security best practices, you should only be configuring this for VLANs that the switch should actually expect to see from the physical world. Most people leave this like this. But you can go like it says up here. I can do 1 through 20, 24, or 23, 25, 30 through 45, and set those manually, or just 0 through 4094, and just leave it. Again, up to you. Teaming and failover is a port group by setting. Active standby, same. Network resource pool is a port group setting. We'll talk about that when we talk about network I.O. control. NetFlow, we will talk about that when we talk about in NetFlow in the troubleshooting section. And then if you just want to block all ports, you can. So if for some reason you want to shut this switch down or shut this uplink group down, set that to yes and watch people complain. So there's not, I don't have a lot of great reasons to block all ports, but you can, you can tell it yes and it will absolutely do that. The next uh, set is here in advance. There's not much here. Basically, it says allow override a port policy, so you can set some things that can't be overridden, and you can edit those here. And you can configure reset and disconnect. I honestly am not sure what that does. Uh, never actually uncheck that box. So that's your uplink settings. Really, the only thing you set there is VLANs. So, you know, if you're not going to change it from all, you're pretty much done there. So you've deployed your VDS, you've looked at the uplink settings, and now you're ready to create your first port group. So you can do a couple of things. You can hit new port group or right click. I'll change it up and say new port group. And we start walking through the port group configuration wizard. So the first thing you want to do is set a name. I like descriptive names. I don't have much of an imagination, so often I will do things like, well, this is the vMotion network, and it's on VLAN, you know, 110. Completely up to you as to what you name it. What I put here doesn't mean anything. You could put whatever you want. 
Number of ports. Remember we talked about a minute ago that when you plug in a VM's NIC or you plug in, a, say, a VM kernel or something like that and you attach it to one of these port groups, it uses a port. So you're going to want to make sure and set this number to something reasonable. Uh, Vmotion is probably one port per, per server, so I could do five and be okay. If this was VM, production VM traffic, and I had, you know, a bunch of VMs and this VLAN had a slash 24 network, I may want to put 256 here. Just don't go crazy. You know, don't set it to some wacky number like 1024 when all you've got is a class, you know, or a slash 24 network. You're going to use ports and you may actually run into that 30,000 limit. So be intelligent about how you do it. Since it's vMotion, I'm going to do 10. And then VLAN type. Talked about this in the VLAN section, but it hits home here. You got none, which means untagged. VLAN which means as a frame leaves this v, this distributed switch, it's going to stick a tag onto it for the v, for the VLAN number, and the physical uplink switch is expecting these frames to be tagged. So for this, I would do 110, like I put up here in my description. You've also got VLAN trunking. So if I actually want to trunk a set of VLANs up to my VMs, my VMs are expecting to see tagged VLAN of uh, frames. They have that special you know guest tagging driver installed. You can do that or private VLAN. And it's going to say, hey man, private VLANs are not configured. Well, you're right, I haven't configured them. You have to configure those at the main switch as we saw at the main DVS configuration first, and then you set the options here. So for this, we're just going to do VLAN. This is probably by far the most common setting you'll use, and 110. And you're done. So it's going to finish up, it'll build it, and you're, you're finished. Now we want to set some settings here, so let's go to manage. And there's a couple things. You can do a description. This is my vMotion port group. Number of ports and port binding type. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but this is where you set it either static, dynamic, or ephemeral. Uh, and it has to do with how it assigns those port numbers that we just talked about. Most of the time, you're going to leave this on static. Then we have our policies. These should look really familiar. You just saw all of these in the uplink configuration. So here's your security settings. Here's your ingress and egress traffic shaping that we talk about in the traffic shaping section. Here's where you want to come back and if you want to change your VLAN tagging information and number, you do it here. Your teaming and failover set at the port group level. This kind of confuses people because they think, well, wouldn't you set this at the uplink level? And the answer to that is honestly no. You don't because you may do different hashing types and things like that depending on the type of traffic, depending on the port group. So it's done at the port group level. By default, it's going to do just like a standard vSwitch, route based on originating virtual port ID. You've got several options, IP hash, source MAC hash, route based on physical NIC load, which is load based teaming, which is the coolest one because it actually looks at the NIC's load, and explicit failover order if you want to give it a, an explicit list. Leave that here for now. Network failover, notify switches, failback, all these are standard VMware vSwitch settings. Then you've got your active, your standby, and your unused. And we talked about this, network resource pools for network I.O. control, monitoring for NetFlow, and again, you can block all ports on this port group instead of switch wide. And down here to advanced are the same to advanced settings. So really, you don't set a whole lot in here unless you want to do ingress, egress traffic shaping. You'd come do that here. If you want to change your load balancing, you'll do that here. When we talk about traffic separation, for example, if I wanted to just use VM or Uplink 4 for vMotion traffic, I can move all these down to unused and just use that guy or you know move one up here to standby. Uh, that's one option for physically separating traffic. You can go port group by port group and move these where you want them. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Hit OK. It'll save my changes. And there we go. And much like we saw in the main switch, a lot of these tabs are the same. It's just going to be specific to this port group for things like ports, VMs, hosts or hosts. If they're in the main switch, they're in this, so that's not a big deal. If you use the vShield suite, you'll see some things here. So, kind of a long lab, kind of a quick walkthrough, but honestly, the distributed switch isn't that complicated. I mean, we went through every setting that you'll see on the main switch, the uplinks, and all your port groups. It's not that complicated. So, you know, that's why it's pretty easy to go through this.